Hello, hello everyone. I am Ted Simpson and welcome to the next video in my series here. Oh, let me straighten it out there. Uh, we're going to be doing a black gessoed canvas. I know it's not black yet, but we're going to go ahead and, and show you the steps that I do here to prep a canvas. So, we've got our black gesso, which is basically a, a, an acrylic based paint. Um, and the canvas has come out of the package with white gesso. But if we want to do these night scenes or, or any type of scene where we want it nice, dark, deep shadows, I'm going to use a sponge here. This is just a natural sponge I got from the art store. But you can crumple up a paper towel or a napkin and get the same effect. Now, to save yourself some money here, you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way, as you'll see here. It's barely a, a tablespoon. I take some here, and if you think you have too much, just dab it somewhere on the plate. The idea is we want to create dark. Okay, I'm doing it down here because this is going to just be pure black, but I want to spot it until I, until I see some nice little effects there. Now that I have that, that's what I'm going to use up here to create some undercolor. Okay, some little leafy stuff. It's a little darker in the corners and then it comes out looking like all the dark parts of, of these tree branches. I know it doesn't look like much yet. Okay, but I'm just showing you the steps here. Bob does these scenes occasionally where heck, like 90% of the canvas has a little bit of color on it. All this down here, I'm just just knocking it in. Don't really care so much. I know it's going to be super dark. And I'm going to, well, double check myself. This is the painting that we're going to be working on here. So I'm trying to figure out uh, approximate things here. Okay. A little bit more gesso. We do want it nice and dark somewhere here in the foreground, and then some spotty stuff. Maybe some bushes. I don't know. I'm not going to try to make a complete, you know, copy of this. Just kind of give a feeling for it. Boy, I'm hitting that so hard, I'm just knocking my whole easel around. So we know we want it super dark here at the bottom. And you know what? He even kind of comes all the way across. If you want to, you can. Lots and lots and lots of stuff here. I don't know, some of this is trees, some of it's is bush type effects. Basically, if it's taller, it's a tree. If it's shorter, it's a bush. How about that? And just like that, we've got our canvas prepped. And of course, play around with it, break up the, the spots as much or as little as you want. If there's anything you don't like, we're just gonna cover it up anyway. But just simple blot, 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 and we're all set. But you do have to let this dry. Look at that. I wasted about half of it. <laughs> so you don't need a lot. So one of the ways that you can test here, if you're kind of in a time crunch, uh, you know, throw a fan on it, let it blow on it for 10 minutes or so. It'll, as long as it's not all dripping, it, it won't take long to dry. One of the ways that you can check is just blot it with a paper towel. If you see black come up, come off, it's not dry yet. Okay? Throw, so, through the magic of editing, I am going to shut the camera off. I'm going to come back in 10 minutes after my, my palette is prepped, and we'll go ahead and start the painting. So, that being said, I'll see you in a second. And we're back. Actually, it took a little longer than a minute, but you don't know that. So, we got this uh, dry now. I've got my colors laid out here. Well, some of them. Apparently, I missed a couple. I was just so anxious to get started again. I'm going to take a very, very small amount of the liquid clear. Now, I put on way too much. You can see here that it immediately starts to look super shiny. It's 
really like the consistency of honey almost there. Oof, and it stanks. It's kind of like model airplane glue. It's a good thing I have uh, an exhaust fan running in the far back there, area there. But definitely have a little bit of uh, ventilation if you're at all sensitive to smells. So, I cover the entire canvas with the liquid clear. Helps keep the canvas wet. Let's us blend that color out very, very easily. I'm going to put the lid on here so I don't pass out in the middle of the painting. No, it's not that bad. But then, really clean out your brush. And I want you to give your canvas a quick once over. Take off the excess, okay? You might pull off a little bit of the black gesso at the same time, no big deal. We want the, just the smallest amount possible on the canvas, and then whatever's left after that will be just fine. So, of course I forgot my leading color here, which is our Indian yellow. Indian yellow is very transparent and it uh, looks really fine on our, on our canvas here. So, one inch brush. Ooh, let me make sure that's all that paint thinners out of it. A little bit of the Indian yellow. And I'm gonna run that, oh, wherever you want the sky to be, something like that. See that? You work it in. That's all it takes. Really, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to go into... See, I pull some down and then bash it around here to get it nice and evenly distributed in the brush. I'm going to knock a little bit of alizarin crimson in there. Focusing first on just getting the tone out there. If you don't have much, it'll come off really light. If you use a little bit more, it'll be a little more true to the color. All right. You can see here how I get it on there. There's just a little tiny bit of yellow, a little bit of white between the, the crimson and yellow. I'm gonna fill that spot in, and I'm just gonna stop for now. I'm gonna come back with a clean brush and soften that. And you know, I think I'll just finish that sky right on up here like that. Grind it in there. You don't have to worry too much about the black part. But look at that crimson. It's transparent as well, so that black will show through. And in here, the more you work it, the more it evens out. But at some point, you're actually going to start seeing the white canvas come through again. So I'm just going to stop there. And I'm just going to clean up my brush with a paper towel. I don't want to use the paint thinner because I don't want to melt that stuff away. A little bit of residue in your brush can, can cause you problems here. So just to hopefully not cause problems, I won't use the paint thinner. And now I'm just going to lightly brush right where the crimson and yellow meet, kind of dissolve that transition a little bit. Uh, make it not so rough looking. We don't just want a, a yellow stripe and a red stripe, or at least I don't. So I soften and create a, a softer transition instead of so hard there. All right. Now that I've done that, knock out the excess paint out of my brush. I'm going to come in with a little bit. And look at that. I only put out a tiny bit of blue, but I think what I put out will be too much. All right, we're going to have some blue water. Ooh, that is a bright blue, isn't it? This is a beautiful, bright colored painting we're doing today. Now, I'm going to get a little bit more here, if you wanted a little deeper blue, 
Look how true that stays. It doesn't lighten up like if we use liquid white. And I'm working my way up, just working it up to the yellow, but I'm stopping. I don't want to accidentally make too much green up in the sky there. A little bit of green in the water would be okay. There we go. That is a bright, bright color. Transparent too. All right, so now that I've got that laid out, I'm going to make a color here. Let's take, oh, crimson. Ooh, a little bit of schmutz there. Sometimes when the tube gets low, you get a little bit of dried color. So I'm going to take all that crimson. What the heck? Crimson, a bit of Prussian blue, a bit of black, and let's mix those colors together. We're looking for a purpley color. Hard to see right now, it just looks black. But if I take a bit of white, mix that color in, look at that lavender color start to form here. I'm going to take that lavender and lighten it up a little bit more. The lighter it is, the further away this feature is going to look. And we're going to make a old distant mountain here, just with a little bit of that lavender color, almost like lilac. So crimson, Prussian blue, black and white. Did I make enough? I think I did. Let's see if I did. Cut off a little roll of that paint. And let's see here, way off in the distance, Might have been a better idea to use a small knife. Big knife makes them big. Small knife can make them smaller easier, but that big knife did okay. Okay. And then using a clean dry brush, I'm just going to move that color. You know what? I think this color could have even been lighter. My uh, version here thought it was light, but that's pretty dark. See that? Looked light. Still dark. That's okay. Every time we do this, we're going to get different results. And I'm just going to keep fading it down. Just let it disappear into the mist. Look at that mist, that little bit of white and yellow creates mist. Isn't that lovely? That's it. Now the more you do it, the more you can pull the color down. I like that. That's looking good. That little bit that I created, get rid of it. Now I'm going to use that same color with no white in it. And let's make a simple little mountain in front of the big one, or in front of the back one. I can't even talk here. So, let's figure out, is it tall, is it wide? Don't really know at this point. Let's see what happens. Something like that. Come on, maybe, maybe there's a little lump there. Bob had a little lump. A little secondary peak going down the, the left side there. There it is. And then this one here, well it does just kind of meander out. Maybe there's a little lump there. And it just kind of travels out and in front of the previous one. Scrape away the excess paint. You can see there that just by scraping it, we remove all that dark, but what is on there is still quite dark. Oh, let's see here. I'm going to change that lump a little bit. That little bump. I think that's good enough. Scrape away the excess. Let's get that clean brush and let's draw this out. 
Ooh, went outside my border there. I think using a small canvas like this and making this just a nice simple little scene, I, I might be able to go bob speed and, and just have a uh, 20, 20 some minute episode. <laughs> There we go. Simple little scene. Let's go ahead and put some highlight on that. I'm still using that big knife. That's uh, I'm taking risks here, and I. All right. I tell you what. Maybe we'll even use that bump as a little extra little thing. I've got enough paint on here to do a few mountains, I think. <laughs> All right. Just want to sneak a little bit on there. Got to have room for a little shadow, too. And can't forget about these little peaks. Little short edge of the knife. Adds a small peak. See that? Some nice light little touches. You don't always have to do a full giant stroke like that. Sometimes less is more. Now, I'll take a little bit of the white, a little bit of the phthalo blue, Maybe a touch of the Prussian blue, too. I don't know. Heck, we could even use this purple color to dull this down a little bit. There we go. Not bad. I do like having some streaks of dark in there. Something like that. Now, I'm just going to use the short edge of my knife. Let's see if you guys can see that up close. Very soft touch. Find the angle where you can sneak that in. Wipe the knife and reload as you need to here. Let's get each of these little outcroppings its own highlight and shadow. Think here, here, right here at the end, I can use the full length of the knife, the, the big side. Get some out there. And of course, there's always a opportunity here to adjust, add a little bit of highlight. Like that. But when you add a highlight, don't forget to come back and add a little shadow to it. Add a little highlight right here, kind of a little outcropping. Come back and give it its own little shadow. Oh, can't forget about the little guy off here. Gotta have shadow on our highlights. Nice. Nifty. And I got my dirty old brush here I used for the, the blue. It doesn't really matter too much here. Just going to soften, create some mist off in the back, the bottom of the shadows. Maybe a little bit of mist on the highlight side. Just a little bit. Very light touch. Just enough to create a little blurred effect. It's 
starts feeling good, and then you just do it one too many times, and you'll wish you didn't. So I'll stop. Look at that. Now, a little bit more of the Prussian blue, and I'm just going to tap it. Prussian blue, maybe some purple, I don't know. I don't know, I don't remember if Bob did this uh, one way or the other here, so I'm just going to do it my way. Let's create a little foothill. Right on down here. Not too worried about this right here, it's just going to get covered up. Now, I do need, oh, sorry about my head, I do need a little bit of liquid white. Probably for our highlights, but also to put in a, a little bit of a water line here. So I'll spread some out, get some on the edge of the knife, give it a little light indication. If it's a little too much, I just, just keep rubbing it. We'll see how you just calm it down like that. Little indication there. Now I'm going to come back with a bit more of that purple color. Tap it into that same mixture as long as we've got a little bit of a darker color. I'm grabbing some more paint. I need to have some up here in the brush for this to work all in one go. Get a darker color. Is it dark enough? Ooh, that's darker. If it's darker, it's enough. Look at that. Create another little foothill here. Or footy hill, as Bob would sometimes say. As long as it's a little darker. It'll work. We even have to put a reflection. You don't have to do anything, but if you want to put a little indication there, it's easy enough to put in. Same liquid white. Little indication there. Same thing if it's a little bold. Keep sawing at it and calm it down to whatever degree of softness that, that you want that day. Ah, I like that. Look at that. Look how fast we just drop these in. Pretty crazy. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to sneak this one out even further. Not too recommended to go backwards here, but there was nothing. Nothing in the way, so let's make that foothill a little bigger. All right, that helps separate that mountain a little bit. I like that. I love that little bit of mist, too. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah, let's make up a color here. Now that we got that mixed up and, and the foothills put in and the shadows of the mountain, we can get rid of that. I might set a new record here with the least number of napkins used. <laughs> so, let's see what we got here. We've got our, our purple color. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, a nice lump of black, a nice lump of brown, a nice lump of green. A lot of nice lumps today. We just need to make up a big batch of this here. How much of each color is up to you. Different colors have different consistencies and you're going to get some different results here each time you do it. There we go. Now, Bob used the big old two inch brush. I think that might be overkill for for us here today so I'm gonna use my favorite brush the the one inch oval brush the black handled oval and let's drop some color in I'm using both sides of the brush pulling some color in and then tapping to sort of 
release the bristles a little bit. Get some paint right up here at the top so I can kind of control where all this happens. And if you're ever worried about it, just start down here in the area that you know is going to be nice and dark. And just bash it in. And I can sort of hook my way out, tap out and back. And it adds these nice little branch shapes. I call them fingers sometimes. See that? Just do, 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 do. Dark, 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 dark. And then work your way out. Look at all this overhanging foliage. I liken this to, uh, you know, it's this deep, deep woods. And we're just coming out of the woods. And all of a sudden, you, you just see this nice idyllic sunset framed by the trees. All these overhanging old growth oaks or whatnot. Ooh, there's a big one. We don't know which tree is which. We'll figure it out as we're doing it. And see how it just frames everything? Very, very lovely. I'm not going to cover up all that gesso. There was a whole point of putting it there is to see some of it. And then maybe, maybe there's some trees here or bushes. We don't know which is which yet. Tap some in. Figure it out. And all this down here, that gets a little bit of that undercolor there. That's all it really needs to be. I'm not really loading too much paint. You can tap it or you can just wipe it. Don't really need much of that at all. But having a little bit there just for our shadows, uh, it's up to you. Okay, so I think I, I'll just keep, in, keep it going here and grab a, a different clean, dry, black-handled oval brush. And let's start making some some foliage, some highlights. So, do I even need a little bit? Just maybe just a touch of the cadmium yellow. Now, how bright do you want it? Okay, a little sap green. Oh, this is very super bright. Okay, I'm gonna dull this down. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Prussian blue Tap it in. Let's have a little bit more to work with here. I'm going to make a bigger, what I call a working pile here. Load that brush full of color. And I am going to take just another drop of the liquid white. We want it to come off that brush nice and easy for us. And a thin paint sticks to a thicker paint. Look at that little hair kind of came off that brush. Let's see if I got this paint dull enough here. And uh, I think right off the bat, bam, 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 bam. Look at that. Just drop in a little bit of color. Back up a little bit. Let's drop in a little color. Soften it. Creating a little section here. One little section at a time. Leaving some lights and darks and everything in between. Reload your brush often. There we go. Working my way down here. And now over on the other tree, I just want to really have an indication that these are, are different trees. So when I mix up this other color, I try to make it different. Okay, a little more of the blue and a lot more of the Indian yellow. Make this completely 
different color. You can even find different angles here. But I think, I think you know what I mean. Letting there be some highlights and shadows. Lots of hangy down things happening here, huh? That's nice. These go in really, really quick and you can make these nice, lush looking things happen. Just that easy. Did I get that one enough? It's hard to tell. I got a little bit of a light from uh, a glare from an angle I'm, I'm looking at here. Maybe we do have a little lighter one, and that's going to have a nice indication of a different looking tree here. Look at that. Maybe it's a bush in front of the tree. And it's got a couple little sections of their own. Good deal. So now you get to play around a little more. I'm going to take a little bit more of the cadmium yellow, liquid white, and I'm going to pull in just sap green. Not, not any of the blues this time. A little bit of sap green. Let's make a little bush here. Maybe that bush has a couple of sections of its own. Maybe even a couple of layers of bushes. However you want to do it. See that? Same thing with this one. Let's have a little bush like that. Change up the flavor a little bit. Adding some more green. Create another layer of bushes here. There we go. Now, I'm going to switch over to my knife. I'll take a little bit of that brown, a little bit of dark sienna. I'll let those kind of mix together. And I'm going to use the small edge of the knife. I think I got a little path. And that path is small up here. And I want it to meander right under these bushes perhaps something like that but maybe it takes a little turn and starts coming this way I'll put a little little bush to fill in that dead spot there and as I'm working my way you could just make it wider or you could change directions again. Once I have a, a little bit of room to work with, then I'll switch over to the big side of the knife and fill in the rest. Just trying to get some dark color out there. Something like that. I'll come back with a little bit of the dark sienna and white. Let's try to make a highlight color here. Ooh, it happens fast. A nice marbly highlight color. Start with a little bit. Let's just graze it. Ooh, that first one wasn't much of a graze, was it? I just kind of covered it up. But there we go. I'll tell you what, we'll call that a happy accident. We'll call that a practice. I'm just going to scrape it up. I'm going to put that dark in again. That's how you 
change things and repair things. You need to scrape it off and put it in again. Now this time I'm going to have a lot less paint on the knife. Graze that over. Let that color just drift off, just like snow on the mountain. And there we go. And then, using my one-inch brush, I really thought I had enough uh, paint laid out here of the, of the yellows and such. So let's gather up some of this color. There we go. I want to be able to load this brush and get that nice amount of paint right up there on the tips of the bristles. That's where I want it. That way, once all the bushes are in, like that, maybe there's a little bush right there. There it is. And then I can come in and let's make some, let's make some nice lawn looking grass here. Just by tapping and moving the brush away. Look at that. Figure out the lay of the land. And just keep dropping it in. Change the angles if you want. Let's come over here and let's see what's doing here. Don't be afraid to let the dark remain. Working my way, depending on how much paint you have in your brush, you can change up the pressure a little bit and get different effects. It's all about how much paint, the angle, the pressure, it all works together to give you, to give you the effect of the day. And you can create hills and flat land it's just on the fly. I thought I was going to put some, some steeper hills in there, you know, it just didn't happen today. And that's okay. I like the effect anyway. Same thing with this here. This one is a little bit higher. Look at that. We'll just change it up. There it is, look at that. Change up the angle and boom, we got a different look. Just like that. So, let's keep it going. Let's keep having some fun here. Let's, uh, well, let's maybe put in a couple little dead trees here. So, maybe with my liner brush, do I have one? I do have a liner brush here. A liner brush and a little bit of the, the brown. Paint thinner this time. I'm taking big risks here. Rolling that brush. Getting plenty of thin brown here. We just want to... Well, maybe. Maybe we'll see a little branch here or there in between. A couple of couple of little ones that are visible here and there. A 
very often here, Bob will have a you know kind of a dead old tree just kind of working its way into the end of the scene. And just like that, I think we'll have a finished painting. I'm going to take my whatever paint I have left here, touch it right over the roots, or the foots, and then I can uh, thin down a color here. What color should I thin down? Maybe just a little bit of white today. Let that paint flow right out of the brush. So with a little T and an S and the year, Got ourselves a, a, a done one. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Feel free to leave a comment or a like or maybe even a subscribe. Thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.